So good morning to everyone. Thank you for watching. It is a wonderful privilege this morning to minister the Word of God. And let me start off immediately by declaring over your life today that greater and greater things are your portion in the name of Jesus. You know, by the end of last year, this word, greater things, resonated in our hearts. And for the year up to now of 2020, we are declaring greater and greater things are our portion. And this is God's heart and God's will for us. And I trust that by faith, you can grab hold of this word. This morning, we're going to enforce this word. Greater things are your portion today. Now, we have, and we as a people are standing on a very powerful scripture. And I just want to just amplify the scripture and let it resonate in your hearts this morning. 2 Samuel 5 verse 10, David became greater and greater for the Lord, the God of hosts, armies was with him. Now this morning, in the name of Jesus, I want you to know that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is not any respect of any person. Simply meaning the same God that took David's life and that made him greater and greater yesterday is the same God that wants to, that's able to take your life, take our lives, and cause us to become greater and greater today. He is the same God that can push you and thrust you into your tomorrow and make your life greater and greater. Now, I can just sense in my heart while I'm speaking that some of you are saying, Pastor, you know, you are declaring this morning greater and greater things. Yet for me, it feels like the year 2020 has become worse and worse, not greater and greater. It has become more challenging and challenging, not greater and greater. And this is precisely why you need to hear this word and why this word, greater things, must resonate in your heart and must be amplified in your heart in this day and in this hour. Let me say this to you today, that God is not the author of negative things. But I want you to be clear that God is the God that can take all your disappointments. He can take all your defeat, your failure, your, 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 your suffering, the, the despair, the discouragement, the difficulties that you are encountering, the challenges and the circumstances that you are encountering and experiencing right now. God has the ability to take all of those things and use it as a very powerful ingredient to use it and to bring greater things in your life. Believe it or not, God uses these things because His Word says that all things work for the good for those who love God. And God just has a way to use the negatives in our lives and use it as such a powerful catalyst to bring greater things and to bring an explosion of greater things in our lives. I want you to know that fire needs the catalyst of fuel to be able to burn. I want you to know that dynamite cannot explode without fire. And I want you to know that sometimes the negatives in our lives will, will, will be used by God as such a powerful catalyst to bring about an explosion of greater things. This is God's heart and this is God's will for us in this day to be thrusted forward with greater things and therefore you need to embrace and you need to be sure today that God is at work and that God is using the negatives in your life right now to set you up for greater things. If I look at the life of David, you know David did not have it easy. He started off with humble beginnings. He started off as a shepherd boy. Many uh, Bible scholars says, uh, or say that he was an he was illegitimate son. Many believe and many know that he was just a shepherd boy. One side rejected, not recognized. But uh, in spite of the difficulties of David, it is clear to me that God used the negatives in his life to set him up for greater things. He had a few 
private victories and the one public victory that he had was very soon met with jealousy and with rage and with violence and for 13 years he had to run for his life because a mad king king Saul with the armies of Israel pursued him and tried to destroy him and tried to defeat him and tried to murder him he he barely escaped with his life time and time again he eventually became a leader of a small rebel army. And that small rebel army with him leading endured difficulty upon difficulty, hunger, thirst, escaped with their lives, had to fight off armies, had to fight off neighboring armies. Even at an occasion, a neighboring army came into their small village, plundered everything, abducted all the women, all the children, Bottom line, David endured many difficulties, many disappointments, many negatives. Yet God used those things to set him up for greater things. I want you to understand and I want you to take hold of this today, man and woman of God, son and daughter of the kingdom, that God is at work in your life. And no matter what you are enduring right now, no matter what you are experiencing right now, God is setting you up for greater things in the name of Jesus Christ. Now when I again look at the life of David, being confronted with all these negative aspects in his life, David never became bitter. He became better. He never allowed the negatives to make him better but he had a secret and today I want to share that secret with you he, he, he lived by a secret in God and because he lived by that secret in God he never became better he became better and because he became better and because his heart was with God God could optimize his potential and God could in spite of the negatives use it as a mighty catalyst and ingredient to set him up for greater and greater things I want to declare over your life like David you will be a man and you will be a woman that will not become better you will be a man and you will be a woman that will become better and even what you are confronted with in your life right now your heart will stay with God and God will optimize your heart he will optimize your potential and he will thrust you into the greater things that God has for you now this is the secret that David lived by and you can write this down this morning number one David turned his worries into worship I'll say it again this was David's secret David turned his worries into worship you see David knew how to transact with God he knew how to get God's attention he knew how to turn things around in the spirit world and may this be your portion may you take hold of the secret today even in the midst of what you are confronted with you are going to turn things around in the name of Jesus because like David you are going to take your worries and turn it into worship read with me this morning from the book of Psalms 84 and just listen it says in Psalms 84 verse 1 and 2 and, and verse 4 to 7 it says how lovely are your dwelling places O Lord of hosts my soul my life my inner self longs for and greatly desires the courts of the Lord my heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God blessed and greatly favored are those who dwell in the house and your presence they will sing your praises all day long blessed and greatly favored is the man whose strength is in you in whose heart are the highways to zion passing through the valley of weeping they make it a place of springs the early rain also covers it with blessing they go from strength to strength increasing in victorious power each of them appears before God in Zion 
I want you to take hold of this this morning, man and woman of God, that like David, you are going to turn your worries into worship. You see, David had the secret. He did not give attention to his worries. No, he gave attention to his worship that he brought before God. His longing was for God. His connection was in God. And because he loved God, because he loved the presence of God, because he transacted with God, even in the midst where he was under threat, where he was intimidated, where he was, was confronted with his very life, he just simply knew the secret of surrendering his life in worship to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He experienced and he encountered the presence of God and at that very moment the presence of God caused such an intervention it caused God to take all the negatives that entire situation that he found himself in and God could turn it around and God could thrust him at that very moment even in the negatives God could bring about greater things because this is what the scripture is saying when we give our lives not to worry but when we give our lives to him in his presence and we transact with him the word of God is clear that we will be blessed even as we go through the valley of weeping even if we are confronted with disappointment even in that place God will pour out His rains of blessing. That valley of weeping will not become a place of bitterness in your life. No, it will become, as the Scripture says, a place where living waters will begin to spring up in your life. You will remain fresh. You will remain strong. You will remain creative. You will have vision. You will see. You will have power. You will go from increasing victorious strength and power upon power upon strength upon strength because those who stand in the presence of God, God's hand is not too short. His face will shine upon you and He will do what only He can do. He is the God of the impossible. And like David, when we stand in His presence and when we understand that it's not time for us in this day to give attention to our worries no it's time for us in this day to put our focus and give attention to the one that can deal with everything that has our future in our in his, his hands that has our present in his hands he is the one that makes all things possible in the name of jesus like david we are saying god make my heart a highway to zion let my heart be flexible. Create within me a new heart, not a bitter heart. Renew within me the right spirit. Lord, put within your, in the hearts of your people, like never before, a spirit of worship. And like David, we will stand in the midst of all the negatives and we will be able to say, we know how to take our worries and turn it into powerful worship standing in the presence of God, knowing that He is on the throne and knowing that He is doing a, such a marvelous work, thrusting us into greater and greater things. Let me give you one more point. David turned his warfare into the Word. I'll say it again. David, his secret was he turned his warfare into the Word. Read with me this morning what the Word of God says from the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17, the B part. And it says, And take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Listen to Psalms 119 verse 98. It says, Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for your words are always with me. Church, I want you to get hold of this, people of God. I want you to get hold of this. David turned his warfare to the Word. That simply means David's greatest weapon of warfare was the Word. He understood before he, he, he could take that physical sword and wield that sword on the battlefield and confront his enemies. The greatest weapon that he could take up was the Word of God. And that was the life of David. 
David proclaimed the word. He declared the word. His fighting, warring instrument before he took up a horse, before he took up a battle, a, a sword, a spear, a shield. He took up the word because he knew how to turn things around in the spirit world even before he got on that big battlefield. The war was won because he took the word. The word of God is powerful. Hebrews 4 verse 12 and sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is like a hammer. It crushes every rock. The word of God is like fire. It consumes. And David knew the secret that the word of God is the greatest warring weapon available to turn around anything, any situation because God is in control. I want to declare over your life today in the name of Jesus, like David, you will take up the secret of turning your, your worries into worship. And like David, you will take up the secret of turning your warfare to the Word. The Word will become your greatest weapon in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now you are maybe where you are at, confronted with things that you never knew were possible and that you never knew would, would come your way. But I want you to understand this, that God is in control and God knows what He's doing. And God is going to use all of these things that's happening, the good, the bad, and the ugly. He is going to take all of these things as a, as a powerful ingredient and catalyst to bring about an explosion of greater things in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to close this morning. And David became greater and greater for the Lord God of hosts was with him and I want to declare over your life you are becoming greater and greater for the Lord God of hosts is with you you are not going to become better you are going to become better you are going to take up the secret of David you're going to turn your worries into worship you are going to turn your warfare to the word and you're going to take up the word as the greatest weapon of warfare. And you're going to establish that word and declare that word in your life, in your workplace, in your business, in your family, economically, socially, physically, in your health, in every aspect of your life. The word of God will speak for you and the presence of God will go before you in this day and in this hour. Kingdom people. God bless you. Take the word of God today. Rise up in your spirit and that know this morning, if God is for you, who can be against you? Greater things, greater things is your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you this morning for your steadfastness. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for believing with us. Thank you for your giving. We want to, and we want to communicate with you as a church, uh, specifically the DIFC church, that very soon we will share with you all the logistics on how we will uh, do things and how we will conduct our services for the future. We are looking forward to greater things, for greater things is your portion. And in Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Amen.